Hello, my name is Ron Sweeney, and I'm here to show you a couple of things we've been doing with Mirth in regards to PDFs. Uh, that includes extracting a PDF out of an HL7 message, and also um, later on converting that uh, for various reasons. But uh, I'm here to show you the um, the channel that we had written here, the solution. Now, I want to give you a little bit of background on what we're trying to accomplish. We're receiving an HL7 message via LLP. We are listening for that message. Now our, our result here is that we want to take the PDF that's in the message and write that to a remote file system. Um, we do that through FTP in our production systems here. Uh, for this example here I'm just going to be writing it to a particular location uh, to exemplify the fact that it's been extracted. So at any rate uh, I'm going to be walking down uh, the transformer right here. Our destination is a channel writer and we're actually writing it to nothing which is pretty close to uh, dev null here at this point but all the magic's happening in the transformer. So here's the transformer. Uh, we are building some various mappings and variables that we can use down here in our money JavaScript but I want to kind of show you where I'm getting these these values. As you can see down here in zpd 3.3 we have a that is a PDF there, uh, UU encoded. So the other stuff is not as fun. It's pretty standard. Uh, thin number in 18.1 and we're in 2.1, last name and first name. But here is where our magic is. Now we've received an HL7 message. We've built all of these variables in on what has been received. And now we're going to build these variables into our JavaScript to do the conversions. Now. And it is worth mentioning here that I used and I wrote my own Java class to do the basic stripping of the PDF segment and also the, the uh, decoding of the UU encoded data. Now, I have heard in various MERS sources that, hey, you know, you didn't need to do that. You could have done that with something that's included in MERS. Um, at any rate, I think this Java class shows how you can use your own custom classes in MERS, and I will leave it there for the time being. So, all right, let's walk down a little bit of the code. Here is my instantation of my, my class strip decode. I have two different methods called strip and decode in this class. The first method takes the PDF segment that we had built here from the top and removes all of the HL7 escape characters. You can see here we have UU encoded data that has some escape characters right here that we need to get rid of. Uh, I think a more elegant solution coming out of this system would have been base 64 so we wouldn't have to worry about any of that. But nonetheless they're there and this this particular class takes care of that. So basically strip all of the escape characters and write the resulting UU decoded file to a to a string in, into this guard.temp and then we're going to read in this guard.temp file and decode it to a PDF with the name, last name, first name, thin number mrn.pdf. So we have a resulting file in a pre-indexed folder on the Pico appliance that is our PDF from the HL7 message. Okay now I'm going to show you another cool function in here that my colleague Chris Bonus and I had uh, stumbled across is that our EMR did not have the ability to read in PDF 1.0, which is an older version, and that's just what happens to be the result of what's in the HL7 message. It's not our fault, just the way that um, the uh, downstream system sends it to us, but we did find a cool class that, to our surprise, was iText, and iText was actually included in the Mirth package. So all we had to do, what we found is that we read it in and then we read it back out and iText took care of it and changed the version to 1.4 and I'll exemplify that for use in our EMR. So that's kind of how everything goes down here. The flow is from LLP to the file systems here on this Pico device and what I want to show you here is that we're going to be writing a 1.0 PDF to a pre-index folder and then we'll be writing a 1.4 over here to this index folder. So nothing here in index and nothing here in pre-index and I'll try to exemplify this through by sending in a message to this channel. So go back to our dashboard. So we go back to our dashboard. Take a second make sure that these are Blank indeed, blank indeed, they are. All right, yep, so, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and send a message in through the channel. This should kick up to receiving seven and sending 13. If we go back out onto our 
Mirth Appliance, our Pico Appliance. I'm going to go into the pre-index folder, and there our PDF has showed up. And then we go into our index folder. It should also be there on the other side. Now here I'll show you pre-index from the message. This here is, open it with preview, turn on my inspector. It's a PDF 1.0 which was in the pre-index folder. Now I'm going to go to the index folder and pull that one up. I'm going to open it in preview and it is PDF version 1.4. So that is a wrap. Um, that shows you kind of how we decoded it and also how we wrote it to the file system. It may not be the most elegant screencast in the world, but I did think that it was um, necessary to kind of show it, to show it in action because the blog post didn't really lend to that. Um, yep, thanks again to the folks over at WebReach for giving us some um, things to play with here. Also a great product which solves something in our environment. And uh, yeah, that's a wrap. Thanks.